And so, Thayer, the progenitor of Abraham, was mentioned in the Holy Scriptures, specifically in the book of Genesis chapter 11, verses 24 to 32. In addition to being Abraham's father, there also begot Haran and Sarai. However, the scriptures do not provide many details about Thera's life, keeping his biography quite reserved. What is known is that Abraham's descent originates from Shem, son of Noah. When analyzing the genealogy that spans several centuries, it is observed that Thera's most immediate predecessors were Nahar and Sarek. According to the scriptures, Sarek, after 30 years of life, begot Nahar and then lived 200 more years, during which he had more sons and daughters. Nahar, for his part, lived 29 years before begetting Thayer. It is complicated to determine with certainty whether Nahar was Thayer's direct father, or if he was his grandfather. This is because the genealogy presented in chapter 11 of Genesis may not be complete or sequential. This can be inferred because the genealogy in question is not considered exhaustive or strictly chronological. It is believed that Sarek could have lived until after the death of Abraham the patriarch, which suggests that the mention of Thayer in this genealogy might be merely representative, highlighting only the most relevant figures of that line of descent. Furthermore, the main objective of the author of Genesis in recording this centuries-old genealogy was to introduce the story of Abraham, emphasizing the creation of the people of Israel and the Messianic line. Regarding Thera's family, the Bible does not mention his wife's name, nor does it specify if he had more than one wife or concubines. The scripture mainly focuses on his sons and how his lineage leads to Abraham, who plays a crucial role in the formation of the people of Israel and in the messianic line of descent. However, it is plausible that Thayer had children with another woman. Later, the scriptures revealed that Sarai, Abraham's wife, was also his half-sister on his father's side. That is, Abraham's father was also Sarai's father, who at that time was still known as Sarai. Therefore, it is feasible that Abraham's father had other children not mentioned in the Bible because they were not pertinent to the narrative. The fact that Thera's children, Abraham, and Sarai married each other, should be understood in the context of that time when this type of consanguineous relationship had not yet been expressly forbidden by God. This prohibition was only established from the time of Moses, as recorded in the book of Leviticus chapter 18, verses 6 to 18. Also at that time, the family had adopted idolatrous practices, indicating that the knowledge of God was not preserved in the line of descent. After the flood, humanity again rebelled against the Lord's will, as documented in the Bible in the story of the Tower of Babel. Thera's children mentioned in the Bible are listed in the following order, Abram, Nahar, and Haran. Some scholars believe that despite this order, it is not possible to determine with certainty if Abram was the eldest son. Some exegetes argue that perhaps Haran, Abraham's brother and father of Lot, who died before the family migrated north, was the firstborn. In any case, by the age of 70, Thayer had begotten Abram, Nahar, and Haran. Regarding Thayer's life, the Bible recounts that he migrated with his family from the city of Uar to Canaan. This exodus marked the beginning of a new stage in the life of his son Abram, who would later be known as Abraham, and would play a crucial role in the history of humanity as the father of the nation of Israel, and an important ancestor in the Messianic line. After traveling approximately 800 kilometers, Thayer's family temporarily settled in the city of Haran, which, like the city of Uar, was a center of worship to the Sumerian moon god. The book of Joshua contains information confirming that Thayer was an idolater. In chapter 24, verse 2 of Joshua, we read, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago, your ancestors, 
including Fair, father of Abraham and of Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and worshipped other gods. This fact is reaffirmed in the decision that was asked to be made by the Israelites during the time of Joshua, between verses 14 and 15 of the same chapter 24 of Joshua. Joshua called the people of Israel saying, Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness, put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord is undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. When Joshua mentioned the gods that the ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates, he referred to the gods that Thera's family worshipped. This information underscores the fact that God sovereignly called Abraham out of paganism to reveal himself and establish a covenant with him and his descendants. This is also clear in the same chapter of the book of Joshua, where in verse 3 we read, Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. However, before this revelation, it is possible that Abraham's father, Thayer, somehow converted to the true God. Although the Bible does not provide explicit details about a conversion of Thayer, his journey from Uar, a center of idolatry, to Canaan, the land that God promised Abraham, suggests that he might have had a change of heart. This act of moving geographically can also symbolize a spiritual movement, moving away from the worship of false gods towards the pursuit of the true God. Some scholars suggest that it might be possible that Thayer, Abraham's father, became a worshipper of the true God, considering that Abraham's religious experience was crucial to moving his family away from the idolatry of the Chaldeans. However, after leaving the paternal family, Abraham went to Haran, another polytheistic city, making it difficult to reach a definitive conclusion about Thayer's faith. In addition to the scant references to Thayer in the Old Testament, he is also mentioned in the New Testament, in the genealogy of Jesus, and is indirectly alluded to in the speech of the deacon Stephen in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 2-5. The biblical text recounts, and Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance here, not even enough ground to set his foot on. But God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. It is essential to highlight the implications of Thera's actions on the destiny of his family and all of humanity. His decision to emigrate from Uar, even with its possible idolatrous background, set the stage for the next chapter in the divine narrative. It was during their time in Haran that God spoke to Abraham, initiating a series of events that would change the course of human history. Thera's example serves to remind us that even without much direct information about a person, their actions, decisions, and legacy can have profound effects on subsequent generations. Thayer, while perhaps not the most pious or prominent figure in biblical history, played a crucial role in God's unfolding plan for redemption by being the ancestor of Abraham and consequently, the ancestor of the people of Israel, through whom Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, would eventually come. Even though the details of his life are scarce, Thayer's legacy is eternally linked with God's plan for humanity. His life serves as a reminder that even when people are deeply enmeshed in pagan practices, God's call can penetrate the hearts of their descendants, steering them towards His divine purposes. 
there may not have fully understood the magnitude of God's plans for his family, but his actions, whether directly or indirectly, influence the trajectory of salvation history. There may not have received the promise, but his lineage did. His story is a vivid reminder that the actions of one generation can have a significant impact on the subsequent ones, even becoming a pivotal point in the eternal plan of God. If this video has been useful and interesting to you, share it with your loved ones, and remember that other people could also benefit from this valuable information. Until next time, and may God bless you.